Hey everyone, I'm saying everyone and there's no one watching, I will be reposting later. I just wanted to do a little follow up to the uh, previous uh, one I posted about um, about licensing work um, because really that that notion of licensing versus buying artwork or rights thereof is is so crucial and um and actually a lot of things stem out of it uh and and if you take it the right way a lot of extremely positive uh things can come out of it um if you are a designer or someone working trying to make a living from artwork or artistic products this applies to to a large extent it applies to music as well for example so uh, I, I might do a couple more. Um, I'll try to keep short and only sort of very thematical things. But um, I will take an example of how, when once you understand the um, that difference between buying the rights, um, owning a uh, artwork versus licensing artwork. Um, once you understand that, it can help and make things so much easier when it comes to pricing your work. And this is where things are, get, get, are crucial because if you're starting as a designer or someone in an artistic field, this will be your ability to, to start and then survive and then succeed. Uh, it will, will depend on that to a large extent. And I'm going to just say that I, I learned that the hard way because I went to art school, but which is mind blowing, not a single time, not once over four years of art school, anyone ever mentioned pricing of work. Um, I was, a, I, I, studied, I studied art, um, graphic design, typography, uh, visual communication, which is in, unbelievable when you think of it. But anyway, so I learned the hard way because I, I struggled with that, but then the other way around it made me it sort of pushed me to to approach it my way and i really trying to try to analyze and and find what made sense and um i'm happy with where i got so i'm going to share that because i find that even much more seasoned designers uh people who've been in the industry for a very long time seem to struggle sometimes so um i will just use a, an example um a little, you know, uh, an example to, to, to sort of get where I'm trying to get to. Um, so this is not, probably not historically fully accurate, but, you know, from anyway, the sort of legend, uh, the urban legend um, that a lot of people have heard about. Um, it, it, the, so that legend is the way the, the Nike uh, swoosh logo came to be. And what at least the legend says um, is that the designer who, um, who designed it was paid $200, $200 for it or something like that. And what I find interesting is that I use this example so many times, so, so often when asked to do logos especially because logos are, are so specifically something that is hard to price. And I use that example because anyone knowing what Nike has become will agree that 200 will be like, what, 200 is crazy. It should have been, what should have, what would have been a, a, a good price? That's the question. What retrospectively would you think would have been a, a good price for a logo that is so capital, so pivotal for a brand? That is a different question, which has an answer as well. But the other way around, did the people who founded Nike, did, did the people who come, came to, to that designer, did they know what they would be? No. Would that designer have been able to ask for a hundred, two hundred, or a million dollars, a hundred thousand, I mean, uh, two hundred thousand or a million dollars? No, because it doesn't make any sense. So what, so what is right between those two 
perspectives. And this is, I wouldn't say it's the rule rather than the exception, but the thing is, it, it's, it's very common. If you start a business, you start, you know, not making money, you need a logo, but you're not doing it to, to, to lose money or to, to close down. You're hoping you'll be successful. So that you need, you know, if you're on the, on the client side, you need to be open and honest about because a lot of people will. And that's the other thing uh, that designers should be aware of is that a lot of people will leverage that sort of, oh, we don't know what's going to happen with our brand and being like, no, we just uh, to, to, to get to get a better price and to sort of, you know, cut down, uh, uh, sort of shut down any negotiation or whatever. But anyway, so I'm going to come back to the, the, the question of the pricing. Um, what makes sense at that point? And this is where licensing comes into play. In a case like that, you have someone who comes to you with needing a, a simple logo, just uh, someone who does a startup, essentially. What I do is very simple. I say, okay, well, you get a basic package. I'll design it. Um, and you can use it for a couple of years or you can use it for a certain amount of time until and and then beyond that 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 amount of time we'll have to rethink based on how you're doing you know in terms of business um, <clears throat> it's as again it's as simple as this and it makes it fair on everyone if the company is making millions if it's a tech startup you know uh Imagine Twitter, their logo, everyone knows their logo, Facebook. It's, it's so basic. Facebook, thank you, Facebook, by the way. Um, but, you know, who's, who doesn't know that, that F logo? Well, it might not be the best logo in the world, but it's, it's pretty important. It's hugely important. It's probably the only element of branding that a company as big as Facebook has. It's as simple as this. Or... You know, that smiley face from Amazon, whatever. Imagine a company, a tech company can go from a startup of people working in their, their gar garage to, to being worth hundreds of millions within a few years. If you're the designer, would you be bummed? Would you think that it's unfair if all of a sudden your logo, your little F, like in a, in a square little thing becomes the, the logo of a, of a billion dollar worth company maybe not within a few years but within a decade well you probably would and that would be totally okay to be because you know and this is where again um a lot of th there's that sort of lack of education on both sides of designers and clients but there also is a certain a certain um deliberate you know, a lot of people sort of maintain a certain ignorance are, are, are sort of leveraging whether, you know, they're just not realizing or whether they're kind of realizing that they actually are benefiting from designers not being more able to, to price their work and being able to negotiate and to sort of, you know, have this sort of perspective. So anyway, start with something that uh, where you get paid for your time you know, at a basic rate, because that's what the logo is, is worth. If, if it doesn't, you know, a logo especially, but it, it, it applies to all kinds of things. Imagine, you know, an illustration, imagine, you know, the Ed Hardy brand, you know, that was a license and that was a genius. That was a genius uh, uh, move from, from Ed Hardy because he licensed his designs and his name and he got it back. And he got you know, put a lot of money for it. And then he was like, well, I don't really, you know, like, I don't know what, what happened with the negotiation. But what I do know is the brand was in, in, eventually uh, purchased from uh, Odiger by another, um, another brand. I know the brand, but I don't know if it's, if it's secret or not. So I can't say it. But uh, so Ed Hardy was eventually bought from uh, Christian Odiger by another brand, Odiger as a whole was, was bought, I'm not quite sure. And then they try to relaunch it with other tattooists, some that I know, uh, well, actually all of them, um, 
to they I know a few people were commissioned to produce designs to to relaunch it and uh and uh that didn't happen so anyway but that was very interesting <clears throat> and typically the you know a good case of someone who handled that extremely well um but back to the logo thing and again use it as a metaphor because it applies to any kind of design um you know imagine a little music label of course those people you're not going to ask you know, 10, 15, 20,000 just for a logo. Like, I don't have that money. But like, but um, uh, anyway, so do it. You have not, not much to lose. It's just, you know, it's, it's time, you know, it's a little job. But say, look, you get it for a certain amount of time, a certain amount of usage. And then if it grows beyond certain things, then you renegotiate around that time. And that, that's the most important thing. As a designer, you need to understand that if someone's so successful, that successful that they, you would be in a position as a designer to ask for a lot of money for your logo, then they won't mind. They, they'd be happy because they're doing great. A logo is the last thing on their mind and they, they just have that money. Do you know what I mean? So this is so important and, and it, it sort of branches to other things such as you know, I think it, the question of the edu sort of the education of designers, and, and that's a whole other subject. But I think it's it's a big deal. Um, and um, anyway, that that's really crucial. Um, so just set it up so that if things, any artwork that you produce for someone, set it up so that if things go really well for the person using it, then you still, you know, get at least another shot. Maybe at that point you're like, okay, now you can just get a buyout for it. I'm not gonna keep asking you for money every few years now, but you know, give me 20,000, give me 50,000, give me 100,000 for a logo. It's normal, it's completely normal. If you're talking about a multi-million or even billion dollar euro, whatever worth uh, company. So that is very important. And uh, again, it applies to to any kind of artwork, any kind of uh, artistic product, pretty much. Um, and this is something that, obviously, if you're working within another entity, a company or whatever, is a bit tricky. And I want to say as well, I've been I've been absolutely mortified mortified uh, seeing <clears throat> the campaign of uh, of apps or platforms such as Fiverr or things like that 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 truly you know promote sort of you know like it's like i don't know how to say like it, it's really a, a spit in the face of any designer to think i mean even the word itself i don't know if if, if people i don't know if it's only in england because of the name it's it's a, a platform called fiverr uh f-i-v-e-r-r -R or something like that and where you can you know hire any designer um apparently i don't know for like nothing um and and really this is like such an idea of like that that you know that it, it's not even putting people in competition it's it's just like saying design is worth nothing but actually the more things go the more design itself is important the more technology becomes readily available the less skills per se, technological, technical skills become important and don't make a difference. And the more the artistic skills truly become important and make the difference. So is that problem? I don't, I don't care at the end of the day. And you know, anyone sort of getting involved in that probably, you know, uh, uh, sort of deserves it. But um, yeah, anyway, that was, that was the thing. So the pricing, you can you can adjust your pricing in a way where you don't get involved in those kind of psychological twists and leverage of you know oh i'm just a small company i just print some t-shirts i just you know print a few vinyls you know i want a logo yeah you do a logo for these people and then but make sure that you know the way you approach how the usage of your work will be allowed and done and 
and, and negotiated it over time can adjust to the situation of the people using it. So yeah, that was it. Um, I hope that was helpful. And um, I wanted to approach another subject that I will do separately another day, which is uh, collabs or so-called uh, collabs, because <clears throat> most of the time they're not collabs anyway. But that's another way <clears throat> a lot of designers and creative people get, in my opinion, um, exploited or, you know, uh, take, uh, taken advantage of um, by brands, by big corporations. Um, and I think that there's a happy, the, the point is, is that it's not, I'm not trying to oppose people, but I think that, you know, I always thought that good business is when everyone wins. And, um, and there are ways to, to make sure that everyone wins uh, because if only one side wins, everyone loses. There, there, isn't, there isn't such a thing as, as you know, it, it's, it's not. So there's either everyone wins or no one wins. It, it's really like that, in my opinion, in business. Um, so I'll get to the, 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 the subject of collaborations um, in, another, uh, in another video. But um, anyway, I can expand on, on pricing as well if there's any specific questions. Uh, feel free to ask me i'll be posting this this video um yeah thank you for watching love you guys bye